people think I'm crazy, but it does work. You do, you gotta be a dick to it, but uh, you gotta be a dick to a dog to make it fucking become a good dog too. So, unfortunately, you gotta do what you gotta do to have a good pet. So, I didn't want a rooster. I ordered. I went to Tractor Supply to buy my new hens. I asked them, I said, are these roosters or hens? And they didn't know, they just, they're chickens. So I bought them anyway. And unfortunately, had to buy five, but, but three of them got killed by my big girls. If you get baby uh, chicks and you have bigger hens, they're not going to take them in like foster babies. They're like, no, their food will eat those little bastards. And that's what they did with three of my new babies. So I had to separate my two surviving babies and lock them up inside the coop for about five months. And then let them free. And uh, they got enough meat on them. At five months, they could take a good peck or two and they could run away and hide in the coop and get away from danger. And uh, that's what I did. So things are working out, but unfortunately, the two survivors, one's a hen and one's a rooster. I like my little rooster. He's a funny-looking white uh silky rooster and he has a big old bunny ass tail so uh, so yeah he's he's a strong willed little bastard but he's learning uh, I had to soak him down with a garden hose pretty good for a month and that seemed not to work so a couple days ago I started to uh, load up my little baby gun and put one right in his little bunny cottontail butt and that has worked very well he's uh, been behaving but he still has that big urge early in the morning to uh, do his little crow going thank god it's a new day hope I don't get a baby in my ass again but Wake up, people. It's a new day. So, so we'll curb that. We'll put a baby in his butt again. Till finally he'll just pretend to crow. <laughs> and he's starting to do that, which is okay. I was like, hey, the girls know you're a dude. You don't need to prove it. No. But the poor rooster, he's been having a hell of a time. The big girls and the baby girl love to pluck on that little bunny ass tail he's got. So so he runs around screaming half the time. And he's like, oh shit, they're after me again. So, but I would start another couple more months and a little bit more meat on him. He'll be the king of the coop. Instead of the, well, my big girls is the queen of the coop right now. So there's going to be a takeover soon, sooner or later. So, but if worse comes to worse, I might have to give my rooster to my baby sister. She's got some chickens, so. So, if that happens, that happens. I can live with three birds. If you're thinking about getting chickens for your backyard, it's the same thing with cities. Uh, cities, use, most cities won't let you have a rooster, but they'll let you have up to about five hens, which is plenty. Um, each bird should give you one egg a day. So for me, three birds, and three eggs a day, it adds up pretty quick because I don't do a lot of baking and things like that. So, so I end up boiling.
having my eggs and having egg uh, snack, hard boiled egg snack, snacks real quick or egg s sandwiches or things like that. Or might enjoy a good egg uh, breakfast in the morning or something. So, but yeah, three eggs a day, that adds up pretty quick. And the bad thing about having your own chickens is since you're not buying eggs anymore, you need to ask your friends, hey, save your eggs, I'll, uh, your egg cartons, and uh, I'll come pick them up or something. And uh, trade your egg cartons for a dozen eggs or something, so... So I do that a lot. And sometimes I'll uh, give some of the RVs, RV or neighbors or whoever stops by looking at the chickens. Uh, I'll hand them a dozen eggs to say, bring back the carton. <laughs> I always need cartons. But when the time comes along, the egg production starts slowing down or if they're in the middle of uh, molting. Molting is when they start shedding their feathers to replace their old feathers with new feathers. Then they stop laying eggs too then. So, so yeah. But they are good birds. They uh, eat all my table scraps. If I don't eat something, I'll go throw it to the birds and they'll love it. They'll eat it. They eat everything. It's like we got us a mire wanting, wanting me to shine my camera towards the car. That's another thing about RV park uh, etiquette. <sighs> Don't be shining your headlights at somebody sitting outside. And just turn off your lights and come on over if you want. But it's pretty annoying to get headlights in your eyes. It's like, come on, people. So, so, yeah. Oh, but Ring of Fire is getting a little higher in the sky. It just sits there. Just sitting there looking at Earth, I guess. I don't know what the hell that is, but it's pretty weird. Pretty weird. So, all right. Another thing with uh, pets at RV park: uh, your dogs do need to be on the leash. Nobody wants to be sitting on their spot and end up having their do having your dog on their lap. <laughs> That's happened to me before. I'd be sitting out here and all of a sudden, boom, I got a dog on my lap. It's like, oh shit, whose dog is that? And lick, 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 lick. <laughs> You're like, God, damn it, dog. Got me all stinky now. But, um, yeah, keep your dog on a leash. If it takes a crap, you better have a plastic bag. You don't go to somebody's spot and let your dog take a shit. Uh, you, you might get a foot stuck in your ass if you do. Um, I am I'm the type of guy that will say, Hey, um, nice dog, but I'm not, uh, I'm not taking dog shit today, so go pick up your shit. <laughs> if you don't have a plastic bag, you're going to have a handful of crap to take home to your fucking rig. So, that's just how that play goes. We've got some people going, driving around a bit tonight. So, yeah. So the bad thing about staying at an RV park is these yahoos, they buy these big ass trucks to haul their fifth wheels in, mostly diesels, and they're noisy as shit. You're like, why can't you get a fucking muffler on your fucking diesel, dude? You know, fucking hear you five miles down the road. 
I don't like noisy ass fucking trucks or pain in the ass. Same with motorcycles. It's like, why do you need a fucking loud motorcycle? Uh, don't do nothing for me. It just gets me pissed. It makes me laugh when I see a fucking smash your bike into the ground. So they're, oh, you stupid fuck. <laughs> I guess it's like a, a warning whistle. Future dumbass is going to be on the pavement pretty quick. Might as well pull over and see if he's okay. Well... Usually don't get too mo too many motorcyclists inside the RV park, but once in a while you might. Like I said, anything's possible. You never know who's gonna pull into the RV park. And uh, you gotta kind of uh, look online about RV parks too. Nobody. You know, unless you're a big party animal, you might want to try to find a party animal RV park to stay at. And then you'll be okay. Um, if you're a party animal and you're staying at this RV park, um, you could be a party animal all day long. We don't care during the day. But when the sun goes down, you got to be a little bit quiet. you got to... Go inside and enjoy your stuff, your party inside, unless you got a bunch of people. And then the manager will tell you to send your people home. So, come back tomorrow and do it again. But that's what makes this RV park nice. Um, you're able to get some good sleep at night. And uh, you're able to enjoy the lake during the day. So, have all the craziness at the lake you want, but unfortunately out in West Texas, um, if you drink and pilot a boat, there are cops on the lake and they will give you a DUI on the lake and arrest you. <laughs> so, you can't be drinking and pilot being a, pilot, a captain in the boat there. So you gotta might have to stick to a beer here and there. Um, and get home safely with your boat behind your truck there when you're leaving the lake. But uh, but you could still have fun on the, on the lake without getting all shit faced on the lake on your boat. Um, you can say that when you get back to your trailer. There's an RV park next to the lake, which is more aptly to uh, let you be a party animal um, more than over here. Um, unfortunately, staying at that RV park, it's a little bit more expensive because you're next to the lake. And... Uh, you're going to have to deal with boondocker noise because the boondocker campgrounds right across the lake and there's some boondocking spaces uh, next to the RV park where people don't have power so they'll bring in some very old piece of shit generators that are loud as fuck and they want to have their ACs going while they're trying to sleep in the hot summer nights here. So, yeah, people, put mufflers on your fucking generators. So it'll make your stay a little bit nicer. We don't need to hear your fucking thing blasting away <laughs> all night. That's a good thing about this RV park. Um, we don't hear the boat, the boat noises or the boondocker generators. So, uh... Again, it's pretty peaceful. All we get to hear is the hum of the ACs of your next door neighbors going on. Or uh, the bug noise from the lake bugs. The crickets. 
and frogs and things like that might be chirping during the night. Once in a while a lake house dog owner dog barking at some deer coming by. Usually when those dogs start barking that means there's a deer or two walking in their yard or walking close by. So this RV park's pretty cool. We do get deer, we get possums, we get raccoons, we get skunks, um, armadillos, we get mud turtles once in a while coming in. They come out here to lay their eggs somewhere from the lake and then they'll turn around and go back to the lake. And then, uh, then you got the RVers. So, it, you just never know what's going to happen. <laughs> A uh, note for uh, dog owners, walking your dog with a leash, doing the right thing. It's still dangerous. Just because you got, you're doing the right thing doesn't mean that everybody does the right thing. Um, I was staying at RV Park in Vegas. Got to know some people um, that were staying at the RV Park I was at. And they had some cute little basset hounds that they'd walk, and uh, they're on leashes, doing the right thing. And out of the blue, um, two big pit bulls showed up in the park. They weren't from the park; they were from the neighborhood. And they saw the they saw the uh, pit bulls. The pit bulls saw the basset hounds and just grabbed them and tore them up. So, yeah, that kind of sucked for them. So, so, it's a good thing if you're walking your dog on a leash, carry you some kind of big walking stick or a good sturdy walking cane or something. So, you can use it like a baseball club to knock the shit out of some stray dog that's coming to eat your dog. Or you're going to have some major vet bills. So I'd highly recommend either some kind of uh, tear gas maybe. Or at least a good stick to pound on another animal that might try to eat your dog. That would totally piss me off uh, if I had a, a dog. And I had my dog on a leash. And then we're having a good time just having the nice little jog and walk and all of a sudden a couple of dogs showed up and just started to eat my dog and I didn't have nothing to nothing with me to beat off the other animals um, just sat there to watch my dog get wasted <laughs> by two, two stray fucking dogs that some uh, dumbass didn't want to lock up or keep up the house or something I know dogs get away but you know still that would piss me off if I had a bunch of vet bills because some other pet owner was a douchebag so and whenever something like that happens oh no they're not my dogs <laughs> yeah anything to keep from paying somebody reimbursing an animals vet bills or fucking maybe having to buy a new dog for the guy so they're all oh, you son of a bitches so and like I said if your dog's gonna take a shit I don't get it let your dog shit in your spot and then you got a trash right there you can pick it up and throw it to the dumpster or you can take it to the dumpster or whatever you want to do but uh don't let your dog go shit in somebody's spot and then just walk off thinking it's okay it's not okay i take care of my yard the first thing i want to do is step in somebody's fresh pile of dog shit in my spot i love dogs but i don't like picking up dog shit so that's why i don't own one.